Hello, hello, it says we're live, so maybe we are live, maybe we're not, who knows, but hey, <laughs> welcome to a another another live stream, I'm Steve from Mac84, hello everybody in the chat, and oh my goodness, we got some super chats already, it is crazy, hold on a second, hold on, we got Greg from Rook -A Mods, eep, thank you, uh, we have Argo Rider 2, eep, thank you, and uh, Greg again, because he needs to stay awake. Eep! Uh, if I eep loud enough, maybe you'll stay awake. <laughs> oh, thank you, Bruce. Thank you. The uh, audio is loud and clear. That's good. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of stuff to cover today. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for tuning in. It's always fun when I have a little bit of an audience to go around with whatever I'm tinkering around with. Let me just move over my uh my windows here dysfunctional wombat is uh, playing around with iweb oh, that's fun oh man i used to make a lot of websites in iweb <laughs> snow leopard that's pretty good that's pretty good all right cool so um today i want to look at a few things and i'm going to introduce some stuff and uh then i'm going to show you some other stuff and then we'll get back to what i'm introducing if that makes sense so um <laughs> Okay, Greg, it's all you. Yes, I'm sorry. I don't know why you log in with different names, but it's totally cool with me. <laughs> Three eeps for Greg. Eep, eep, eep. All right, I'm going to lose my voice doing that. Okay, so, yes, we'll get to that, Ryan. Don't worry. So, um, here is a Macintosh LC2. And I did a recap of this. Um, it wasn't a live stream. I actually did this while Bruce was doing a live stream. And um, I thought, you know, I had a few of these under my belt already. I could just do this one on my own. And uh, while I was able to replace the caps and only, uh, I think, two traces on this were lifted up, um, it's still experiencing the same issues that um, I noticed when I tried to get it to work last time. So I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to turn it on. You're going to see what's happening with it. And then I'm going to explain what an Apple Tech Step is and what my whole goal with trying to use that is going to be. Uh, here's just a, a bad board I was playing around with before, so I'll we'll move that over. And there's uh, a lot of junk on the desk here, but we're not going to be using this desk too much. Uh, we're going to be going to a different place. Okay. Yes, this is the one where I it was late and um, Jay was bored, and I said, "Well, if you want to, if you want to log into Skype here and watch me fiddle around with this thing, you're welcome to do so." Uh, yeah, I'm sure the title is misspelled because I do that a lot. Macintol. Yeah, it's a Macintol, not a Tosh. Macintol. Let's change that. S. If I hit save, this probably will destroy the stream, but whatever. There we go. <laughs> that's that's the, the that's the way I don't get taken down by Apple on YouTube. I just have to misspell everything. Alright, I fixed that, but it probably won't even show until you guys refresh still. So. But thank you for your eagle eye, Greg. <laughs> so what happens when you set up a stream from a MacBook Air via remote desktop to a computer in the basement and you're trying to rush things. So anyway, um, so um, yeah, I'm going to turn this on, show you guys what it did um, and sort of explain what I thought I would be able to fix by this. And we'll go from there. So first off, we have to plug in some things. This little Macintosh here. The first... Oh, refresh by itself. That's good to know. I can misspell things more often now. Well, should not encourage me to do that, actually. Um, if I could actually... See, um, this VGA adapter I'm using has this little pin that it stole off the back of the uh, the LC. And I'm looking for a pair of pliers. Here they are. Because these things, if you don't have the right grip on them, oh boy, they are fun. And by fun, I mean annoying. They are annoying to get loose. Ow. Well, let's try this way. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Right, so we'll just put that to the side. I'll fix that later. Not important enough uh, to mess with for this test right here. So I'm um, actually going to lift this up a little bit. It doesn't have to be flat. I don't want to put unnecessary stress on the um, plastic pegs that hold this board in. And I'll raise the camera in a second so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Unfortunately, we have to take this out of there too. Uh, these little pegs that hold the uh, screw holes in for the 
the monitor like to interfere with this particular VGA adapter I'm using. Um, and I'd use an actual Macintosh monitor where I'm using that off screen for something, which you'll see in a second. So just bear with me here while I do this. Okay, almost done. Perfect, okay, so let's get the camera closer as everything wobbles around. Okay, so here's the Macintosh LC2. Uh, desk is very crowded here. And yes, this is my dollar. You can't have it. <laughs> um, and so what we're going to do here is just plug this in. I want to show you exactly what was happening when I tried to turn it on when uh, Jay and I were having a, a Skype session the other day. So I'm going to plug in the video cable here. Uh, I'm going to get an ADB keyboard, which I should just have an abundance of at my feet, but I do not actually. Let me go grab one. I'm not going to grab a mouse, just a, a keyboard should be good enough for what we need to do here. Okay, yes, with that one dollar, cha-ching. <laughs> All right, we got our keyboard plugged in, and now we just need a power cable, which I should have right here. If it's not, oh, there we go. Just like me to put a machine on top of a cable. Okay, so make sure this power supply is off. It is off. I'm going to plug this in. Going to make sure the speaker and the fan are plugged in. We're going to switch this input to the proper setting here. <laughs> YouTube has not paid me a cent yet. Let's get that straight. Okay, so um, so we're going to turn this on, and um, hopefully it's going to do what it was doing the other day. Uh, we have our VRAM in. We have our memory in. So let's turn this on. Oh, power supply has to be done. So it doesn't chime. The screen goes away from like the, the on-screen display. And then the screen goes to green as like if it's detecting a video signal. But that's it. We don't get any love from the Macintosh here. Now, sometimes this speaker will make all sorts of crazy noises. And it'll start hissing and howling. And when I used to blow on these capacitors in this area, it would just whine. So they were so sensitive, these capacitors, that this speaker would just go nuts. And I do have some footage of that I'll be sharing. Um, but yeah, so I thought recapping this board uh, would resolve the issue. Now, this isn't the neatest recap I've done. There's a little bit of flux still left here. Um, so, I mean, there could be some messed up traces or something like that. Uh, it looked pretty clean to me when I was looking under it with the microscope. Everything seemed to make a good connection. Yes, Dana, thank you. <laughs> Oh, yeah, let's not get into that, Dana. Oh, boy. Anyway, um, and, uh, yeah, I was looking around the board, and nothing really seemed too bad, but I admit it was pretty late when I was trying to figure this out. Um, I only, I, th I think I only did one neat recap, and that was under the extremely careful guidance of Bruce. And, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. But, anyway, um, so there's something wrong with this machine. Uh, I don't know if it's just something that's weird about it. Uh, I'm going to try resetting the PRAM. I highly doubt that's going to do anything, but uh, when in doubt, try something. So let's do that. Yes, Bruce is all seeing eye. Yeah, and I did try this with the floppy disk drive and the SCSI 2SD, and I wasn't getting anything. Um, I suspect maybe it's something to do with uh, one of the caps that was replaced. It looks like all the values are correct in the, the right configuration and everything. Um, now, the original thought was maybe I could use the Apple Tech step to diagnose this thing. However, um, since the capacitors or something around that area may be to blame, um, I don't necessarily want to do that for this one, but let's see what happens. Maybe, maybe we could test that out. Because um, I do have another LC2, so worst case, we just use the Mac uh, text, the Apple text step on a different machine. But, um, yeah, so I just wanted to, to give you guys an update on this one, because I was playing around with this the other day. Let me shut this off real quick. Well, I don't want to shut it off, actually. I'll just use the camera to zoom in here. Um, let's see. What is what is Dysfunctional Wombat saying? My Revision A iMac was fixed by replugging the power supply internally. Such an odd thing, but it usually fixes things when it doesn't want to post. Huh. 
Okay, well, this power supply is actually from a different Mac, so I've tried two different power supplies here. I've tried the memory and the VRAM on a different LC2, and it worked fine. So I know those bits aren't uh, the issue here. Um, yeah, this is an LC2. Um, I think this board may have been from a Performa 400, but the, the board actually says, uh, and the camera's not going to focus, well, it actually did. It actually says LC2 over here. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, this camera is just this little Logitech webcam. And if you've seen my live streams before, you've heard me yelling at this silly thing because it's supposed to do pretty good focus. And if I'm doing like this and just looking straight at it, it's going to focus pretty well, well, except for the lights. Um, and it does work out pretty well. However, when I'm moving around and stuff, uh, it just gets stuck, like, does not want to focus. And I have to, like, trick, trick it by putting my hand in front. Um, so I'm, I apologize about that. I downloaded the drivers, which were supposed to do something, and they didn't. Um, so I think this camera just hates me. Uh, unfortunately, on Windows, there's a nice set of drivers for this thing. We actually set a bunch of configuration things and settings for it. So, I don't know, maybe I got the wrong driver package for it. I got it from the Logitech website using this model number, but uh, it's neither here nor there. So, um, yeah, there's a, a few things I want to do first. Um, okay, I'm glad to hear that, Bruce. However, when you use the, your camera, Bruce, it doesn't seem to have so many problems. <laughs> so, first thing I'm going to do is turn this off. I'm going to just use the uh, multimeter to check those capacitors are making their connections because it was quite late at night when I was messing around with this with Jay, and... Uh, I may have been very sleepy, so, yeah. All right, so let's turn this off here. I would be happy to accept that, Jay, and see if that works. So uh, I'm just going to unplug these things here. And how are you guys doing on this Tuesday? This, this Tuesday evening. It's better than a Monday evening, I'll tell you that much. Although Monday evening was fun. Bruce had a nice live stream about uh, recapping an LC... 575 was it very fun machines it's gonna build a, a mystic classic which is gonna be sweet i do have two color classics but uh, i have to recap them so uh that will be something i got into hey jordan thanks for joining ah 575 i always get those mixed up close enough <laughs> not really but okay so um yeah let's take a look i'm not going to get at the microscope here because hopefully we're not going to be taking too long here but Let's move this a little closer so you can sort of see what I'm seeing here. And uh, uh, this desk makes it a pain to get this tripod super close to me. So I'm just going to do the best I can. And I appreciate anybody's patience with what I'm doing here. So you can see my messy desk and whatever I'm doing here. Actually, I should be utilizing this second monitor and putting your chat here. So you can see your own chat. How about that? Isn't that cool? I can move this around. Cool. All right. So. Uh, let's see if we can confirm what we're doing here. And what I'm actually also going to put up on this screen is, uh, <laughs> iChat. Yeah. Uh, if I get my XServe working, maybe I'll start an iChat server. I don't know why I would do that, but it sounds exactly like something I would do. And I'm going to go to Bruce's website, recapamac.com.au. And, oops, where'd it go? And I'm just going to go to the Macintosh LC2 on here just as I check along to make sure I didn't goof somewhere. And here we go, LC2. There we go. <laughs> oh, God. All right, this is going on the other screen. No, no, no. Okay, let's just move. Actually, I have to move it over here because this uh, Bruce's website has to be over here so I can look at it. Yes, you are children, but you're awesome. Okay, so... Ah, yes, bonjour. You could, you still use iChat, even if you don't have AOL to Messenger. All right, so here's Bruce's website here with his handy little guide here. So, hey, that's the board I have. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, let's make sure we have all the right capacitors in all the right places, because that would be pretty embarrassing if I did not. All right, so we have um, a 10 microfarad 16 volt. Yeah, that looks correct. We have a one microfarad 50 volt. That looks correct. Um, this one actually was an Apple one that I didn't replace. It kind of looks weird. I know you can't really see it, but um, yeah, this 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 these boards. Uh, I I don't know, Bruce. These are pretty uh, 
nightmarish. And I have at least two more to go. So my whole thought was maybe I could just plow through this and get them done. But yeah, there's stu there's a stupid amount of caps in this corner. Uh, and one looks pretty singed from the hot air gun. And that was not one I put on there. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to find... Uh, and, and also, and this is, this is not a problem uh, based on bad advice or anything, but just in particular, the caps that I ordered... Um, and the width of the, well, let me get the, the microscope back because I want to, I want to explain this to you guys and it's going to make sense. If I, if I can't show it to you, it's going to not make sense. But so, um, let's look at one of these capacitors here. So this guy here, uh, terrible job I did on this one, but anyway, um, let's go to the one of the small ones here. So this one here, you can see all the flux and all the crap I had to clean off, but this one here, the width of the area, you could see, do you have a tool here? No, I don't have a tool. Of course I don't have a tool, Stephen. Why, why, why are you going unprepared on live shoes? Anyway, uh, here, you could sort of see this little white line right there. And then this little white line here, it's terrible because of the lighting, but you could sort of see it. That's the width of where the capacitor was. And these new capacitors are just a bit wider, just a bit wider. So, yeah, and I'm sorry about the motion sickness, yeah, sorry. Um, so, yeah, the problem is with this is I have to be very careful when putting those caps in, and maybe I just got the wrong size or something, or maybe that's just how they all are, because it just might be that way. Okay, sorry, reading uh, the chat here. Um, yes, rest in peace, AOL Instant Messenger. I did a video about that. That was actually my second video that I ever did on this channel. Uh, third, if you count the trailer. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so, I mean, this this may need some additional work here. Um, it's not looking like the best job I've ever done, and I definitely did not think that I was going to screw this up. But anyway, let's go, let's go back to just confirming the placement of these here. So we have a 10-16, 10-16, 10-16. Uh, that one looks a little... <laughs> The heat got to that one. Now, Bruce said that these could withstand pretty good temperatures, so hopefully that uh, does not have to be redone. Uh, <laughs> all right, and uh, 1016. Uh, this is a 4716, 4716, uh, a 1016, a 1016, uh, 1016, 1016. Uh, this is a 100 microfarad 6.3 volt. Which is interesting because on the other Macintosh I have, this is a 6 volt, not a 6.3 volt. So I guess they, they there were some tolerances there that Apple changed depending on what they wanted to do. Uh, also, uh, one of these very, very tiny caps fell off during um, while I was using the heat gun, but it, it actually went right back into place. Um, but I think I did test the, the uh, functionality on that. And then we have uh, the three over here, which gave me a little trouble. And those all seem to be okay, except for this one looked had a, actually had a crack in it. Um, here, let me let me put the um, let me see if I could put the photo on the stream here, because this was this was pretty uh, this is pretty crazy. Um, let's go to my desktop here. I think I took a screenshot of it. Yeah, let's see if I can bring this in. Yeah, let's see. Let's uh, go to uh, image. Sorry, we're we're live. We're doing it live here, so. And I have a, an old Mac Pro with a spinning hard disk. So there we go. So see this capacitor there? Look at that. It actually had a crack right in it. So that wasn't a piece of hair or something like that. That was a crack. Isn't that nuts? So I actually did not have the reading of this. And it was actually hard to determine uh, the voltage and everything. Because if you search that, you know, that value in Google, um, it doesn't really... You know, show up with anything. Uh, we think it's a three volt one and a three microfarad, maybe something along those lines. I forget exactly. I have to scroll back in the chat. But um, what I did was uh, that's just the out of focus flux because uh, I was about to rip it off. So that's why there was flux all around it. Uh, so yeah, this uh, this capacitor was just cracked. Um, so what I actually did was the uh, broken board um, that I have here. Uh, I took one of the capacitors 
that exact capacitor was on here, so I just took that off. Now, yeah, maybe those both could have been bad, but yeah. I'm sorry it's terrifying you. We don't want to terrify anybody here. There we go. Um, let's just catch up on the chat here. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> don't worry, Jay. I'll be here even after you're done eating. Picked up an external hard drive, uh, one terabyte drive for $3 last week. Not bad. Okay. Eat lasagna all day. Hey, that's not too bad. <laughs> do you have a PDS video card to try? I do not. I have a PDS accelerator. Um, so a CPU accelerator with a math coprocessor on it. I have an Ethernet card for it. And I have an Apple IIe card uh, for the LCs. But I do not have a PDS video card. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. The external drive looks like cheese grater. It matches my Mac Pro. That's pretty cool. All right, so, yeah, so it looks like all the caps are here. Now, the less fun part is going to be actually going through and just making sure these actually are touching where they're supposed to be touching. And I kind of, yeah, it's, it's actually very difficult. So I have a conundrum here because I really don't want to spend, like, a boring hour messing around with this and trying to get it to work when I kind of really want to show off the tech step and some other cool things I got. So, um, my blood is flux and spaghetti sauce. <laughs> I need a, I need a shirt that says that I'm, I'm screenshotting that right now. Dysfunctional wombat, by the way, I don't know your name dysfunctional wombat. So I'm just going to keep saying that. Uh, no, I wasn't asking any questions, Bruce. If I did, uh, you would have heard me screaming all the way from the United States. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I have sort of a conundrum here because I, I, of course, do want to work on this LC uh, and get this to work. But I do want to show you the tech step, which I think will be far more interesting than me trying to salvage this. And I, don't worry, I'm going to probably do another live stream or maybe the end of this uh, live stream, maybe tinker around with this. But I do have some other exciting things to show you. So I really don't want to spend all the time just looking at this, this problematic board here. Uh, exactly. What's a tech step? Well, that's what we're going to look at right now. And um, let me just move this off of the desk and uh, I could start talking to you about it. Okay, let's put that here. All right, so um, a tech step uh, was a piece of hardware. This thing right here, isn't that beautiful? This is a piece of hardware that Apple sold uh, to its technician. So either you were part of the... Um, Apple service support program or service source or one of those. Uh, this was a huge like trapezoid type little device here. And what you did was you have all these connections here for ADB, printer, modem, SCSI, sound. Yeah, it does look like a doorstop or a giant cell phone. Hello! <laughs> and so essentially you plug in all these cables into your Macintosh. And this machine will be able to test the functionality of your Mac. Let's say... Uh, do a CPU test, uh, check your memory, stuff like that. Now, the tricky thing with this is, unfortunately, um, you're sort of limited on what Macs this could use. So there are there are two slots on the side here, and you see those each have labels on them. Now, I believe there are four or five of these little cartridges, because these have ROMs on them. And without these ROMs, you're basically stuck. You have to only use what you're, um, what you have here. And um, so the, the two ROM packs I have are thankfully uh, ones where I have some of these computers. So uh, I have CPU test volume one, version 1.1.1, and CPU test volume two, version 1.0. So CPS, uh, CPU test volume one, 1 1.1.1, consists of the Macintosh Classic, the Macintosh SE, Macintosh SE30, the Macintosh 2, the Macintosh 2X, and the Macintosh 2CX. So I'm able to uh, find those, at least. Um, actually, test those, rather. I'm, I'm reading the chat and talking at the same time. Sorry. Um, and this other CPU test here is for the Macintosh LC, the Macintosh LC2, and the Classic 2. So again, I could do uh, tests on those machines. Now, there are two others, or at least three others. Um, one actually has to do with SCSI hard disks. So you actually format the hard disk or at least read and write and do some tests and stuff. Uh, just from this little device right here, because of course it does have that SCSI port on the back of it. Um, yeah, these are not these are not 
easy to find. I honestly don't recall how much I paid for this. It was over 10, 15 years ago. Um, it wasn't that expensive because I was able to afford it. <laughs> uh, it did not come with all the accessories. Um, usually you'll see it with a carry bag and sort of like 10 foot long ADB cables and serial cables and all this stuff bundled together very neatly in a package. Uh, and more of these ROM cards. These, these are probably worth, uh, you know, equally as much as this thing if you're looking for a full set. Uh, so here's the little bottom label of it. It has a copyright date of 1991, uh, but most of the information I found was from 92 uh, or 93. Um, so how this works is, yes, I could run tests on this on my own. So this thing is like its own little computer. and has this little screen on it, and you can input numbers and uh, respond to questions and stuff like that. Tell it what tests you want to run. However, you could also plug this into a Macintosh, and that Macintosh can also... Uh, download reports that this tech step has um, found um, and all sorts of good stuff. So we're going to be playing around with this in a second, um, probably with the Macintosh 2 and maybe the LC2 because I have those two machines and they are supported by these ROM cards. So I think this will be fun. Yeah, there's there's a lot of cables that you need for this. <laughs> so I have cables that are not that long, but we're going to deal with it. We're going to see what we can do here. So I, I think it's a pretty uncommon device. Uh, whenever I post a picture on Instagram or Twitter about it, people are like, what the heck is that thing? Um, and it, I don't know. It, this, this whole like green color is kind of cool. Um, on the left side, here we have an on and off port just because I didn't show it here. Uh, we have a power port for the power adapter. I don't have the power adapter. Um, I found a picture of one so I could recreate it. However... Um, you could just power this with a 9-volt battery, which I have, so uh, we don't have to worry about that. And then this is the diagnostic port. You plug that into a working Macintosh, and you can download reports and stuff like that. TechStep is basically not related to OpenStep. No, I don't believe it is. <laughs> I don't think so. But, yeah, so we're going to be playing around with this. And uh, to do that, uh, it's kind of Newton green. It's actually a little darker. Let me grab a Newton, because we have to now try this. Let's see. It looks similar to a Newton. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I'd say the Newton is a, a little bit brighter. So this is a message pad, message pad 130. It's about the size of a Newton, not the not the thickness, but just a, a little taller than I'm um, off center. Sorry, just a little taller than the Newton. Uh, yeah, that would have been neat if they did. I don't think they did though. Um, I mean, they both have a serial port, so maybe you could connect them. I don't know how that would work or anything, but. Here's a message pad 2000. It's seen better days. Uh, the the co coating on the front is sort of peeling off there. But uh, yeah, the Newton's just a bit different green. This has a gloss to it. This is more of a, has a texture to it. But okay, so let's move those over here before I drop something. Okay, and um, I actually, since Greg mentioned it, I have uh, an e-mate here. He was saying he saw some on eBay. Well, here's my e-mate. And uh, the only problem with it is the infrared door is broken. So the little plastic piece of black there uh, for the infrared door is missing. But other than that, it's a pretty nifty little machine. And I have the stylus somewhere. Um, it's essentially a later Newton with a keyboard on it, which is nice. Um, but what's also cool is you have the uh, newer Newton peripheral port here, but you also have your standard serial port. That was a problem with the Newton 2000. It only had this port right here. So if you wanted to uh, you know, connect to older printers or anything, you needed to buy an adapter. That adapter is stupid expensive. I think I paid $40 for that adapter over 10 years ago. That's probably worth double that now. Um, but yeah, these are, these are pretty rugged. That's what the back looks like. As a handle, you could definitely see the influence of the clamshell G3i book. Uh, that I probably got from here. Same thing like the iBook. At the bottom, you have these little charging ports. So if this was like a school uh, type thing, you could, you know, charge this in a case of machines. Um, and then we have uh, two card slots here. I believe they're either card bus or PCIM and MCIA Head headphone jack here. Uh, this was number four in a school, I think. So <laughs> that would explain that. But yeah, pretty cool. You have your power adapter slot here. And then there are these two little indents are where you could just put the stylus. So you could either keep the stylus on the left or the right, or you can put the stylus here. So pretty neat, pretty neat. It's shaped like a butt, yes. <laughs> Bruce has been drinking his Go Quick juice, I believe. <laughs> oh boy, so yeah, that's uh, that's the e-mate, but uh, the e-mate's pretty fun. No, he is not wrong, he is definitely not wrong. 
G3 iBook. Alex! Holy crap! Hey, Alex! How you doing, man? Long time since I've seen you. I didn't know you paid attention to my crap. <laughs> oh, Alex. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Um, yeah, so... It's been a long time, man. Jeez. Well, you can see I haven't gotten any prettier. <laughs> this is what I do now. I do weird live streams where we mess around with old Apple crap. Who would have thought? Exactly. Um, so... Everyone's like, who's Alex? Um, say what you will about the Macintosh portal. I kill for a backlit version. Some guy was selling one on Facebook and I messaged him, but he sold it before I got, uh, got a chance to, uh, respond. Well, thank you, Alex. That's very cool of you. Um, so we're going to mess around with the tech step in a second, but, um, I found something cool that I know you guys would appreciate. So, uh, let me bring it over here. This is a t-shirt that, uh, it's not an Apple t-shirt, but this is a t-shirt I had in my youth uh, when I was a, a larger individual. <laughs> I just found this and I had to share it with you guys. Look at that. Mac my day. So that, that face here uh, is reminiscent of the old dialog boxes. Of course, he's wearing sunglasses here. Um, and uh, this has a copyright date of 1994 from Computerware. So, <laughs> yeah, this is a, a pretty, pretty weird shirt. There's nothing on the back. Uh, believe it or not, I probably wore this in high school or middle school or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's probably very big on me. But I think it's a very silly shirt. Um, I have a few of these weird Apple shirts. Uh, and this is just something that I love. So I'm not going to put it on. But <laughs> had to share that with you guys. So um, to get this tech step working, we're going to need um, a Macintosh that is working. Because I want to show you the interface between that. So I'm going to swap the camera over here. I'm going to open, uh, not open, but we're going to use this Perform over here. So let's uh, get you guys situated here. Here's this Performa. And you can see all the crap behind it. Ah. There we go. And it's going to be a little crazy with the screen here, but we should be okay. Because I want to show you guys the tech step. I think it'll be really cool. Yeah, this, this I, I got at a thrift store of all places. It's kind of yellowed. And it's like a weird plastic top, but... Yeah, it's better than nothing. Thank you. Yeah, this, this Performa uh, has seen some better days, but it does work. So that's the most important thing. Now, the ADV cable I stole, so it's over here. Let me grab it back from this keyboard here. Sorry, we're sort of jumping all over the place today, but sometimes you have to jump all over the place. So. Let's plug in our keyboard. And don't worry if you guys can't stay for the entire stream. Um, they go up on YouTube. You can watch them again and again if you'd like. Or skip the boring parts. You fall asleep. Whatever. <laughs> uh, this is a neat keyboard. This is an Apple design keyboard. Uh, I'm sorry, Apple adjustable keyboard. My bad. And uh, so you could actually adjust this. Uh, it's a little cranky here. I have to probably lubricate something. but. It's meant to be ergonomic. I don't want to break it here. Uh, and then there is a breakout panel that plugs into this with a bunch of extra buttons. It's a weird keyboard. It's a very weird keyboard. Um, so yeah, let's move those Newtons out of the way here. And we have our monitor plugged in. Yep. And uh, yeah, let's turn on our Macintosh here. Oh, you can hear that SCSI hard drive. <laughs> Sorry, just catching up with the comments here. Yes, the ever present color plus monitor. Yeah, color plus 14 inch display. Yeah, I have another one of these. They're, they're honestly not my favorite, but I don't know, the design is kind of just like very boxy. It very likely does have a quantum drive. Um, that was like the most popular hard drive that Apple shoved in these machines. I don't know if they were the cheapest or what, but it would not surprise me if they were, because that's Apple. Buy cheap, sell high. So I think this is running on Mac OS 8, so uh, it's probably not the fastest or the swiftest machine, uh, but it should be able to get us uh, what we want to get to today. 
Let's move this just a little bit over so I can actually sit down here. I think the text of software is on here. If not, I can get it from another machine. You love the sounds of the old hard drives. Well, that doesn't surprise me. A lot of people do. And I like them too. That's that's the one thing I don't like uh, so much about the SCSI 2SD adapter is, you know, that noise, but I, the reliability is probably better, so <laughs> much, much, much better. All right, so the flicker isn't too bad. Let me see if I can adjust this a bit, because uh, I think we can actually mess with this a little bit. Hold on. Hopefully you could hear, excuse me, hopefully you could hear me over this uh, machine here. And I can't change the resolution at all because this monitor is 640 by 40, but I think the, uh, the refresh rate is actually locked at 67, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. But, yeah, okay, so I kind of have to back this up here, I guess. Uh, I don't want to give anybody, you know, a headache by looking at this thing. But, okay, so, um, yeah, let's see if this had the tech step software on here. It may not, but let's see. Let's do a search. Wow, this uh, keyboard's acting a little funky. It might need to be cleaned, but... Yeah, the H key doesn't want to work. There it goes. Whoa. <laughs> All right, we're going to swap out the keyboard if this continues. All right, I don't think the text step is on here. Um, whoops. But we can put the software on here quite easily, so we'll do that. Yeah, it's not finding it. Okay, so uh, let's put on some After Dark to amuse yourselves while I uh, go find uh, a floppy or something to put the tech step on. Let's read the chat here. Sorry, I have my back turned to you guys. <laughs> Attach a speaker to the SCSI 2 HD adapter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Yes, that is an IBM, um, let's see, I think it's a, uh, let's see what that is. It's my in-laws on machine. Let me turn the sound off of this thing. Let's see what that says. Yep, that's an IBM PS1. Um, it does work. I have the monitor for it in the garage somewhere. I'm not really an IBM person, but they were going to toss it, so I'm like, all right, might as well. What's one more? All right, so let that go. Um, trying to think. So the TechSet software is on that Mac Mini there. Unfortunately, this does not have a uh, does not have a CD, a uh, an Ethernet card. So I could probably use a CD. Uh, I wonder if that. Yeah, actually, that might have it on there. Let's see. I have a CD ROM with a bunch of Apple stuff. So let's see if uh, we can get that to load. Because it should have that software on there. Oh, this is an interesting CD I'm archiving. This is from Macworld 1995. See the Power Computing logo on there, and I believe this is the CEO of Power Computing. So uh, this was like a promotional disc from them. Has a marathon on there, a bunch of other software and stuff. So this I'm archiving. Going to put on the Macintosh archive so everybody can uh, can. Uh, enjoy the contents of that disc. I have no idea how I got it. It probably just came with a collection of bunch of crap that I forgot about. Okay, so I have a CD here. And this is a totally legitimate Apple Macintosh CD. You can tell because there's an Apple logo. Totally legitimate. Alright, we can close out of After Dark here. Alright, it read the CD. That's good news. Alright, so there is a bunch of software on here. Um, let's see. If it's not on here, it might be on one of my service source CDs. Let's do a search. I'm just going to search for the word step because that should bring it right up. Ah. All right, 
it didn't like that. Um, I have some CDs. Let me go get them. It's probably on there, hopefully. Okay, here we go. Switching machines, what's going on? So we're uh, getting the software for the tech step, Ryan. Um, so here's a service source CD package from Apple, December 1997. Uh, this is May 95. This may have what I'm looking for on there. Let's, uh, oh, I hit find again. Yeah, if it's not on these CDs, I could just put it on a, a disc or something, but I'm just hoping to make things easier that it's here. Let's put that CD away. <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I have a, just a, a handful of these. There's one from 97, one from 99 and one from 95. I got this not too long ago um, from someone who was just giving away a ton of documentation. Diagnostic utilities, uh, disc copy, no. Display service utility, that could come in handy. Apple Vision recovery utility. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Again, I'm just gonna do a, a search. Oh, come on. Yeah, there's something. This this keyboard needs some love. It's not the only adjustable keyboard I have. I actually have one that's like pretty much brand new in the box. Probably was not too specific in my search. Oh, tech step compatibilities. What is this? There's a bunch of... Beginning with A. Info library. Now I'm curious. Oh, these are PDFs. All right. Hey, maybe there's a PDF about this. What was the name of it? Uh, a Apple Tech Step Mem capabilities. All right. <laughs> Adjustable keyboard keypad symptoms. It's <laughs> uh, probably what I'm running. Yeah, I'm gonna click on that. I hope Acrobat is actually installed on here, otherwise we'll run into some issues. Okay, Acrobat Reader 3. Let's move this camera closer so you can try and see a little bit better what I'm looking at here. Adjustable keyboard bad keypad symptoms. So this is a tech info library document from April 1994. <laughs> Not for general public release. Oops. Um... Describe symptoms of a bad adjustable keypad modules and how to troubleshoot the keyboard. Customers press the control option or command key and the Macintosh responds as if the power key was pressed. No, that's not the issue I'm having. All right. Well, the article library number was 15196. All right, we can close that. But let's look at this uh, tech step one. Hello, Raw Elements. That's all right, Greg, don't worry. Uh, so uh, we're gonna be looking at uh, an Apple tech step here, uh, but first I just need to uh, get the software. So I put in some CDs into this Performa, and I'm just trying to see if the software is uh, is on this system or not. If not, I could grab it from something else in the network. But I came across these tech info library documents, uh, and this is about the Apple tech step starter kit. It includes two ROM packs. Let's see which one it actually includes. Uh, volume 1, 
of CPU tests and the SCSI hard drive test ROM pack. Okay, so that's what it looks like it came with. All right. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like we actually have the software on this disc, but that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna. There's two CDs in this set. I'm just gonna try the other disc, and if not, we'll just transfer it over from the other machine somehow. Uh, so this is about testing hard drives. All right, we can close this out for a second. Yeah, and hopefully we get to to do some uh, exciting things. So. We can actually play around with it. So let's eject that CD. Because there's a second disc on this one here. Um, program manuals. Archives. This might have something. Let's see. It might not. But let's see. <laughs> That's all right, LK, L, LK computes, computes. Sorry, I'm very far away from the screen here. That's all right. Go get some sleep. You can always catch me later. But I appreciate you hanging out. All right, cool. Let's see what's on this disc. Sorry if I'm boring you guys. Just trying to get this to uh, to work here. All right, so again, let's just do our search here. It does not want to use the keyboard command. Oh, yeah, I love find file. Sherlock was just like, the whole interface just made my old computer lag so much. Like, unless you had a really zippy machine with that, that could handle the brushed metal graphics, like, at the time. Oh, these key This keyboard is really, like, not being happy. I'm going to... I'm going to break a rule here. The rule that you're never supposed to hot swap ADV devices, but you know what? Drive me crazy. All right. Let's fix that here. Much better. And of course, we didn't find anything. All right. We'll have to transfer it the old-fashioned way. Oh, I love Spotlight. Yeah, Spotlight is great. Yeah, if you got a if you got a G3, Spotlight works perfectly. But uh, anything other than uh, a faster machine, you're going to be lagging a little bit, especially this poor old Performa. <laughs> Let Let's guess the the CPU speed of this Performa. Who wants to guess how fast this Performa is? You'd be surprised. <laughs> All right, we have a guess of 33 megahertz. We have a guess of 40 megahertz. We have another guess of 33 megahertz. Any other guesses? 66 megahertz, says Scarlet Swordfish. Okay. Any other guesses? All right. Those who said... 40 megahertz. You are too fast. This is a 33 megahertz machine. This is a 68 LC040 Motorola processor at a blazing 33 megahertz. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, this is a Performa 631 CD. Yes. Yeah, they, it's probably had like so many different of these these models and such different names slightly different names all right so uh, i'm just gonna be off camera for one second i'm just gonna get the um the tech step software off of i think it's this machine shoot uh let me let me turn on this machine in the corner here it's on one of these machines uh because what happens is i back up one mac to another and then transfer the disk image files around so it could very well be on a different machine that i'm thinking of but let me just wake up. Uh, there's AGB G4 tower in the corner. Just seeing if the file's on there first. Let's see. So I'm opening up Sherlock 2, oddly enough.
Alright, so I'm doing a search. Yep, I found the disk image, I think. I'm just opening up the disk image, seeing if this is what I need. Yeah, searching here. Okay, it looks like I have the software. Let me just transfer this over. Okay, so I have the IP address. Let me just grab this IP uh, on this Macintosh here. I have a, a Mac Mini. Well, here, let me turn the camera around so sort of see the madness I'm doing here. There's a G4 in the corner, so I'm going to grab those files. Go on here. Hey, you can see yourselves again. Hi. All right, so let's do that. That's why it helps to have a stack of Mac Minis here. All right, yeah, let's do a Java update and a migration and CD sharing update in QuickTime. And yeah, no, we're not doing any updates yet. <laughs> no, thank you. That was the IP address. I think. Let's check. Let's check. Oh, nope, I got it wrong. It's not 76, it's 73. Sorry. Let's try it again. Okay, here we go. It looks like it found the G4. We're connecting to it, and we're going to connect to the hard disk here. Okay, and we have our tech step folder, so I'm copying that to the desktop. All 1.4 megabytes of it. Okay, yep, we have a readme first, we have a report generator, and we have a test uh, software. So, I think that's what we need here. And for some reason, there's a KidPix image there. Hey, Coolio person. All right, let's see. Sorry, catching up on the chat here. Stack Mini, yep. <laughs> yes, that is a mini tower right there. I could, I, I, could, I could add a few more to that, but that's what I got for now. Um, let's see, Frank's 2,000-inch TV. Frank's 2,000-inch TV. Copyright strike. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, the, the 630 is not System 6 compatible. <laughs> We're not even paying attention to what's going on in the stream. Well, <laughs> that's, I guess, kind of weird, but okay. All right, so uh, I'm grabbing this tech step software here. Uh, I am copying it over to this Macintosh. So let me now grab it over here. As here. The trick is going to be uh, getting it to that old Mac, but I think we could do that. All right, so we grab something and then we could copy that over. 
Uh, let's see. Other than the IDE drive, I'm guessing the 630 would have a nearly identical performance to the LC575 I just got. Um, it's interesting because some of the system buses are slightly different, um, and sometimes that uh, they have different caps on the memory. Especially Apple did some weird things, as Bruce was alluding to in his uh, stream yesterday, is uh, when they sold two different machines that, let's say, had a similar processor uh, and, and, let's say, performance ish like around that same area they would cap one in the ROM so it couldn't accept a certain amount of memory so the Macintosh TV can only accept eight megabytes of memory um, and I think the SE or one of the SEs um, oh no, I'm sorry the classic two I believe where it was the original classic one of those was capped I believe at a, at a certain amount which was annoying your lamp just died uh oh eep <laughs> eep okay uh, that was a free one there Okay, so let's get, uh, actually I have a floppy drive over here. Let me grab that. Uh, it's a USB floppy drive, so we should be able to copy uh, the contents uh, from this Mac Mini to that Mac. Let me just see if it's over here. It should be in the pile of garbage I have. Crap, whatever. Um, or, you know what, it might be right over here, because I was playing around with it when I had the iMac set up, and usually I keep all that stuff together. In fact, I see a disk drive. Let me see if, if that's there. That's not the one I was looking for. It might work. Let's let's see. Let's see what we could do. So this is just a generic PC uh, USB floppy disk drive. Whoops, but it might be able to work for us. So here's a tip for you guys. I know it's a Dell thing, and ugh, Dell. But so this is a Dell floppy disk drive for I believe it's like the Latitude 600 series of laptops or whatever. Um, however, there's a secret. Well, not a secret. It's probably advertised, but it doesn't look like this could do anything but go into a, a Dell laptop, right? Aha, but on the corner, there's a USB mini port right there. So you just take a USB uh, to USB mini plug, plug it right in there, you got yourself an external USB floppy drive. Not bad, huh? Now the trick is to find an appropriate cable. <laughs> it's always about cables. There's, you can never have the right cable when you need it, etc., etc. Let's see. Sorry, just catching up here. Lamp resolved. Yay! Yeah, some of the bus speeds on those machines. Oof. Eeps for all eternity. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume the 630 and the 631 were like the lowest lowest machines out there. They were performers after all. A back door. Yes, as long as it's high density. Uh, thankfully, I need a high density disc, so I should not have a problem with that. Alright, so let's get a USB cable, and then we can plug that floppy drive in. Otherwise, we're, we're kind of screwed. Hold on, I have to like go over to this end of this basement. Hold on. <laughs> ah.
can I not find a USB cable? Huh. Um. Oh, here it is. Ah. It was right in front of me. All right, so we actually have that plugged in to our Mac Pro. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, no, it's not fine. Let's unplug that. Ah. We'll plug this into our Mac Mini. The label which mini was which. I thought I had a label on these. Oh, the label's on the back. Well, that doesn't help. So let's try and plug that in. Nope. Maybe. This live stream is a bit of a mess, guys. Sorry. But we're having fun, hopefully. Ah, come on. Turn that. Okay. Sorry. All right. And let's get a disc. Um, I had a stack of discs here. I was using for that giveaway, and they're all unformatted. Perfect for this use. <laughs> Where the heck did I put them? Oh golly. Ah, here's one. Alright. Purple disc. Let's put that in. You hear it humming? That's not the microphone. Ah. Microphone's over here. Hear it humming. Hum! Yeah, Windows machine won't know how to read a Macintosh format of floppy disk. As I knock over everything on my desk. All right, so let's uh, screen share to the Mac Mini here. So, yeah, actually, we have a Disk Tools disk. So this is already a Mac formatted disk, but uh, we're going to erase that. Um, do I want to erase that? I mean, I can. I'm just a little confused because I had a whole stack of floppy disks here. Um, oh. There we are. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> F. All right, let's pay respects to this AT&T disc. Everyone type F. <laughs> That's very, it's very, very strange. Maybe, maybe F for format. Probably a, a Windows formatted disk, but I'm probably just asking for trouble here. <laughs> uh, maybe F means fail, because it's making noises. All right, we're just going to erase the disk tools disk. I can make another. I don't know why sometimes I don't like doing that. All right, you're making weird noises. We're unplugging you for a second. I said nice things about you. You better work. There we go. You're making good noises now. As good as a floppy disk can make noises. All right, so we got our text step files here. Come on, mount yourself. There you go. All right, so I should be able to trash the contents of this. Uh, I could use a SCSI to SD adapter, but um, I have to shut the machine down, plug it inside of the machine, and I just don't want to do that right now. Alright, we are going to empty the trash of this floppy disk. Alright, so 1.4 megs available. Let's copy over um, this text step test thing first. It's 450 kilobytes. Sorry, just catch up on the chat here. Uh, I have, um, well, on here, I'm actually using 10.9, and then in this virtual, well, not the virtual window, but in this VNC session, I'm connected to 10.4 uh, Tiger. It's a screen sharing. So I'm connected, this, this Mac Mini here, so let me get this plug in here. 
This Mac Mini here is a 2010 model. You can see this old capacitor is hiding here. My desk is an absolute mess. That's what happens when you live stream and you don't clean up, kids. Um, so here's a 2010 Mac Mini. That's the one that's plugged into this display right now. This, these two uh, G4 Mac Minis, they're uh, connected to the same Ethernet network, so I could just screen share and control them. Rather than plugging in different displays or using up another display on one Mac Mini or another, I just do a screen share, which is perfect for my purposes. Um, once you do like classic mode on Tiger, screen sharing kind of gets messed up. But other than that, it works out pretty well. <laughs> Big brain. Uh, all right. Let's see. All right. So we're copied to that disc here. This should be okay. Let's just rename this something that we know. And I'm actually going to... Whoop, wrong button there. I'm actually going to sign into my email real quick because... I'm pretty sure I emailed myself the tech step files not long ago, and I just want to see if uh, they match up to the ones on the floppy. Just want to make sure we have everything we need. And of course, I'm logged into the wrong account. Huh. Yes, Tiger does. And there's a lot of v VNC servers you could run on older versions as well. All right, tech step. Come on, do your little search, please. I forget if it's in my emails or on Google Drive or one of those things, but here we go. Tech step. Let's see. It says there's a file attached. Oh, those are files, not images. Uh, here we go. Tech step software. Getting started. Okay. And then we have Apple Tech Step and then Getting Started. So we have a few things here. So let's just take a look, uh, see if these have anything different than the folder that I had. Uh, it's probably not going to like, yeah, the image format's not recognized. It's going to yell at me. Uh, let's just move this over to the Mac Mini, see if we have any better luck with that. Uh, if not, we'll just start with, the, with what we got. Sorry, I you know this is terribly exciting. Okay, so we have those disk images here. Let's move this a little closer here. And so let's see if those open up here. Not recognized. All right, that's a little concerning. Not recognized. Well, you know what? Let's, uh, we're connected to this Power Mac G4 here. Let's see something. Tech step new. I'm just curious if maybe it's like a disk copy thing where it only likes uh, their .img files. So that may be it because uh, that's like disk copy 4.3. Let me just uh, walk over to this G4 and see if they'll open it. opening up the program here. Yeah, it doesn't like those images. They must be saved um, with disk dupe or something different, but um, I think we got what we need for now. So let's eject this floppy. Wait for it to stop making noises. All right. And let's go back over. Oops. Spinning the tripod the wrong way, so we're going to get tied up here. And let's go back to our Performa here. Okay. So. Oh, my goodness. There's no floppy just driving here. Are you freaking kidding me? I just put the disc in here and it just dropped? Ugh. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we're shutting this darn machine down. Oh, how's there not a floppy disk in there? 
Doesn't allow driving there. This is a disaster, guys. Serves me right. All I want to do is show you guys something cool. And nothing wants to work. Well, let's bring this monitor down. Okay, well, I guess we're going to open this up. Because why not? Oh, boy. Yeah, unfortunately, this does not have a network card in it. I could burn a CD, but I kind of don't want to do that just for one file here. So getting the, the, the board out of this thing is fairly simple. Um, getting the front off of these, the plastic is going to be annoying, but let's see what we can do. Yeah, there are these clips here. You are going to be a pain in the butt, aren't you? Aren't you? Ah. Well, here, let's, let's open up the back here. So this guy probably needs to be recapped as well. But here's the board. Um, actually, this is an LCPDS slot. This is not the right card I would use. This is actually a, <laughs> a different type of Ethernet card. Um, but if I put that in, would that actually fit through there? Maybe? It would be a tight... Actually, I don't think this one would. Hold on. I have another Ethernet card for an LC. Let's see. This should be called, like, I don't know, distracted streaming, because nothing wants to work and we're just jumping around going crazy here. So here's the Ethernet card I have. Um, this hopefully will fit. Let's see. Okay, so... Yeah, I think this will actually this will actually fit there. It's a shame because the communication slot is basically not being used. But I don't have anything else to plug into this, so we could use Ethernet here. So I really don't feel like ripping this case open. Well, hold on, let me be smart about this first. Let's see what brand this card is. Parallon LC card. Let me take a picture of this. We're going to need drivers. Oh, boy. This, this is not how I thought the stream was going to go, fellas. This is... Uh. All right. So the LC card is on there. The Ethernet card is on there. Yeah, I have, I have adapters. We're going to get all the adapters out, I have a feeling. See, I, tr I try and do things simply. I really do. And then it all just goes to crap. So, story of my life. But let's uh, let's get some of this stuff out of the way here. The whole point of me using this machine is I thought that we'd have everything we needed, but. We can't have nice things, apparently. Okay. Get our monitor plugged in here. Hey, Greg. Oh, I sure stepped in it today, didn't I? I thought, oh, I'll just do a live stream. It won't be complicated.
All right, let me just get this Ethernet cable now. I think I was at work when you did your live stream, so <laughs> sorry about that. That's uncontrollable on my part. <laughs> okay. So, we have our Ethernet cable. Plug that in. Let's see the Mac here. Turn our Mac back on. Hear the lovely roar of that SCSI hard drive. And monitor's on. <laughs> I like I like Bruce's excuse more than mine. And somehow 18 of you people, 19 of you people are still uh, watching. So thank you. I try and keep it interesting here, even if we have issues. Because the next thing I'm plugging in is this zip drive, if uh, if we need to transfer stuff. In fact, I should have plugged this in before. Don't worry, I'm not going to plug it in while the machine is on. I'm just literally putting it here, because we may have to use it. And of course, I have a USB one, so if all else fails, we'll figure it out. <laughs> that bleep has been on the wall. Bleep, bleep, bloop. Okay. Let's see if this actually recognizes the uh, Ethernet card. I may need some Theralon drivers or some garbage. Yes, I love that advertisement. It's like the first network at 45,000 feet or something like that. Ooh, you repasted your CPUs. What the heck are you beeping at me for? Okay, let's see. Uh, let's go to, I guess, TCP IP. Let's see if it recognizes the card. Ah, oh, there we go. Ethernet. All right. Um... Let's see if it actually will grab an IP address. It might not. Oh, let's make sure Apple Talk is uh, switched to Ethernet. Nope, it is not. Let's switch that. Yes, Ryan, I'm aware. <laughs> it may not seem like it. I may I may seem very aloof at times. I have done this too many times before in my youth when I was very young and lonely. <laughs> there we go. Here's our... This is a pretty cool site. I love this. When we see the names of new Macs on an old back, there we have our Mac Mini Tiger and our G4 there. So... There we go. So, I should just be able to connect to... Well, let's connect to the G4 here. And those files should be right on the desktop there. Excuse me. All right, let's make a folder, uh, files from network, and we're going to just put everything that we need over there. All right, so we're copying those files, finally. destroyed the flexible extension on your iFixit kit. That's unfortunate. 
That's why I don't buy expensive sets like that, because I'll just end up breaking them anyway. <laughs> I just, I know myself, so I know that's that's what I uh, don't want to do. So actually, I'm going to eject this CD here, this Apple Pier CD, because we're not going to need it. Um, I actually want to put in uh, this legacy software CD in again. Again, this totally legitimate legacy software CD. And uh, see if we can... Uh, I think there's a disk copy program on here. I just want to see if that's a little different than what I have. Okay, yeah, you do get lifetime replacement. I'm pretty sure you have to send them the part back, though. <laughs> I'd lose it. <laughs> I wouldn't just break it. I'd lose it. <laughs> All right, disk utilities here. We have disk copy three. That's not what I want. I like an older one. So like disk dupe or something, or maybe that maybe that's not a non-Apple thing. But uh, let's see if it has the old version of disk copy on there. No, no, no. I'm not searching over the network. No, no, no. Freeze this machine up. No, no, no. A space maybe? Well, that's pretty good. All right, just copy 4.2. I'm opening disk copy with disk copy. I am really feeling the 33 megahertz of slowness on this machine. All right, let's uh, copy this. that close that I'm just curious if we can open those disk images that I had uh, saved I don't think I can oh I think I actually don't think they were even yeah they probably had their resource forks destroyed actually uh, thinking of where I got them from but that's okay yeah they're not showing up yep their resource fork is toast but it's all right we have our folder here all right so we have two programs here tech step test and report generator. So let's look at this readme first file. Okay, to run all tests, Apple recommends using the following Macintosh computers. Okay, uh, the following computers can run all, but not, can run some, but not all the tests. So the Mac Classic can run everything except ADB. The 2FX can run everything except SCSI. Uh, the Plus LC, Classic 2, 2SI, Quadra 900 could do all of them except the ADB and SCSI. Uh, the Macintosh Portable can do all tests except SCSI and Stereo. The Apple Tech Step cannot be used on PowerBooks or the Quadra 700. Okay, that's good to know, I suppose. All right, so let's get uh, this Tech Step working here. So I think we just need to put a battery in here. Just catch up on the chat. Let's see. You guys are behind me right now. Sorry. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It's very strange. It might might just be the way the ROM is, because again, this this little pack uh, depends on ROMs to work. So uh, I think this slides up. This little plastic. Oh, I have to point the camera down so you guys actually see what I'm doing here. Um, I believe this little part slides up here to put the uh, the battery in. Let's see. I don't want to break it, but. Uh, Something moves, I know that, because I've done it before. I'm just being careful off screen. I don't want to bust it up or anything. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this actually comes out. And there's that 9 volt battery right there. Okay, so let's take that out before it does anything. So there's a little plastic holder thing. Let me try and get that out of there. Talk about you're talking about early 90s TCP. 
I remember trying to configure an Ethernet network on Windows 98, and every once in a while it would work, but every once in a while it wouldn't. So that was fun. <laughs> Alright, so we have the battery out here. If I could get it out. Come on. With 9 volt batteries, I'm always afraid I'm going to break something as I'm trying to carefully... There we go. Okay, so that's the old battery. Let's see what the date on this one was. What? 2008? No. Huh. Energizer Holdings Incorporated, St. Louis, Missouri. Well, whatever. Well, <laughs> Alright, so we have a brand new 9 volt battery here. We're not going to mess around, we're just going to put one in there. <laughs> Dysfunctional Wombat's like, I'm going to get myself some 90s Max, and I'm going to slowly turn into Steve, and have to replace all the SCSI hard drives and capacitors and batteries. <laughs> uh, Alright, that turned right on, so let me put that battery back in here. And uh, so yeah, that's what, that's what the side, this just pops right out there, so I was actually little concern but yep yeah, that works out so let me put that back into place all right so we turn this on let's see if you can see the screen there there we go so i'm going to flip the on switch here let's just center this as much as i can uh, here we go ramen slot a computer test volume 2 apple computer incorporated 1992 so it's asking me to identify the cpu i want to test an lc lc2 classic one um, I think if I turn this off and swap these modules, it'll prompt me for, if I could put this in correctly, it'll prompt me for the other machines. Yeah, so now it's asking me for a Classic or an SC, SC30, a Mac 2, 2X, 2CX. Very cool. Uh, too many. Too many, Brian. Too many. <laughs> Way too many. Alright, so um, I want to test some things with this now. Uh, before we go and run some tests, I just want to see if this test software will work on here. So let's let's open this up here. Apple Tech Step Test. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. Uh, cannot be run on this type of Macintosh. For best results, use a Mac 2, 2CX, SE, or... Oh, come on. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I thought we could just run the report on, on there, but um, I guess not. Well, I have a Mac 2. The problem is it, it's... Oh boy, it does not have any like memory at all. <laughs> it's two megabytes of memory. Pretty sure we can't run the tech step software. Um, here, let, let me see if there's a... What else was on that, that uh, folder here? So this is why I have to recap my Mac so all of them work. Report generator. Will this help us? Maybe we can at least pull the report from the device? Enter customer's name. Uh, port. Modem. Oh, okay. So I can receive logs from this. Let's try that out before we do anything crazy. Let me just plug a serial cable into here and try and get some data off of that tech step. How about that? Sound good? grabbing a serial cable here. No, that's a mouse. Hold on, let me grab one for the other side.
Okay, finally, we have our cable here. So this should be as simple as just plugging this serial cable into the modem port here. <laughs> of course, the bezel of this Macintosh is long since gone. So let's look at another Mac for reference. The printer port is usually the one on the left. So we'll go to the one on the right. Let's assume I'm right with that. We have our serial cable there. And we're gonna plug this into our tech step. And turn it on. And see if we can receive any reports that are on this thing. Waiting for log from Apple Tech Step. Press star to send, then choose a log, okay? functions all well, yeah this is like it selected the ROM already I don't want to do that maybe I have to run the report and then I have to send it over I do actually have an Ethernet card I think it's for an SC I don't know if it's for the SC30 forget which one already but huh um, let me just see if uh, was a way to show a report here. Yeah, maybe maybe the report is uh, is not here because uh, I could not run it on the machine. Huh. Well, um, I'm trying to think how to do this here because I need I need a, a classic or a Mac two. You know what, let's, we can, we can plug this into the Mac 2. Uh, the, the Mac 2 doesn't necessarily need to do anything for us to get a report from it. So, yeah, let's, let's do that. So, uh, I'm gonna, let me shut this machine off, because I might move this. Actually, I don't think I have, well, I'm indecisive. Hold on. Um, yeah, let me use an LCD screen for one of these, so I'm not breaking anything over here. Um, the keyboard on my Duo. Oh, hold on. So Brian has uh, an SSD in his Duo 8, 8, uh, 280C. That's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, there's a video card from Radius, but I think it on is only compatible with their monitors. So that's a little bit of a, a tricky thing there. All right, so here's an LCD that we can use. Uh, if you were watching when I put five displays in a Macintosh 2, um, this was one of the, the monitors I used. Okay. I bet you Greg fell asleep. Grudy probably fell asleep. <laughs> he was, he was hoping I would keep him awake and I think I failed him. Sorry, Grudy. Alright, so we have a table here because I, I have to put this Macintosh 2 somewhere. Oh boy, this is a heavy guy. Alright, uh, we don't need all these display cards in the Macintosh 2. <laughs> we don't need all of them here. So, um, I'll leave one of them in there. carefully over here. And there was actually an Ethernet card in here, but I don't think we had enough memory to, <laughs> to do anything like that. Um, I do have our SCSI to SD adapter here. Gonna make sure I plug it in correctly. Okay, let's just put like a CD case under here so nothing touches that metal. And we need to plug everything in here. Sorry, let me move this screen so I can see your comments better. Ah. 
Ah, uh, Greg's still there. <laughs> um, all the display cards was because Jay, among other people, were uh, suggesting I fill up my Macintosh with display cards to see how many monitors I could get, get them from. <laughs> That is a lot of video cards, yes. <laughs> Jay has returned! <laughs> Damn, I was hoping you would be you would be away so you wouldn't hear yourself get blamed, but oh well. Alright, so um, I'm actually unsure when we run the test on the Macintosh, if it's if it's like when it's on or when it's off, I really don't know, but um, I don't have the manual for the text step, I don't think. You just see if it's on this machine, because I, I don't want to, I, I want to make sure we're actually going to do this correctly. Uh, let's see if I have a PDF of it here. someone actually scanned the manuals in. Maybe they weren't uh, PDF files originally. Um, oh, here we go. Let's download that. All right, so I'm going to be just looking at this PDF here for one second. I just want to make sure I'm going to do this correctly. I don't want to screw up anything. Uh, you could watch more. version 2. Let's open version 2 here. No, Chrome. Ugh. No, I don't want to open up your, your PDF viewer. No, thank you. All right. So, yeah, someone had to scan this in manually. I don't think an electronic version exists. At least, maybe it's on one of the CDs I have. I just don't know. All right, getting started. The Apple Tech Step is a handheld tool that... And the microphone over here. Sorry. The Apple Tech Step is a handheld tool that... Uh, use uh, test Apple products with driven by the Motorola MC68HC11 8-bit single microchip controller. Alrighty, so do we start the machine up or what do we do? So here's some of the things it could do. Uh, diagnose most non-bootable computers. Uh, removable port pack, easy access to connectors, blah blah blah. Okay, it's like all the things that are getting acquainted. Yeah. AC adapter, serial port, switch, uh, connecting AC adapter, yes, yes, yes. Let's see, a log of the current system. Ah, uh, okay, so the report on the tech step is only there until I turn it off. So that's good to know. Dana already has an ANS, don't you, Dana? <laughs> All right, let's see. Using the keypad. Setting up, here we go. So yeah, those are all the cables you gotta plug into the tech step here. Got our ROM packs, battery and AC adapter. Okay. So every time you switch on the tech step, a new log appears, okay. All right, so report generator. No, we want to run a test. Testing extended. I just want to know if I have to turn the machine on. No, that's maybe I skipped something. I want to know if I have to turn the machine on to use it or if I, I mean, I guess it has to get power somehow, right? Yeah, so. All right, let's just plug all the cables in. I, I'm assuming that's what we got to do. Sorry, just catching up here. Um, no, I don't think I said the tech step works on ANS. 
I, I was just saying that you have an anus. <laughs> Uh, some classic games you mentioned there. Some classic games. All right, let's uh, get this tripod back over to our Macintosh 2 here. And if we could set up the tripod, that would be fantastic. There we go. All right, so we're going to, um, I guess, boot this thing up. And we need to plug a serial cable into there, um, a SCSI cable. And let, let's... This readme said that some tests don't work on this. Let me just see what cables I don't have to plug in. Oh, it actually says for the two, everything can work. Okay, so let's let's try and get a plug for everything then. Um, we have a serial cable. Uh, let me get up a spare ADB cable. Alright, so I keep going off camera. Got my ADB cable here. So let's plug that in. And I'll probably steal the SCSI cable off of the zip drive because it's the right size for it. So we need to plug ADB into here and plug that into the back of the tech step. It actually has a port for two cables. Um, I guess I can plug in two. Now here's an interesting ADB cable I have. It just looks normal, but there's a little sticker on it that says Ireland, right in the middle there. It's not gonna focus, but I guess it was manufactured in Ireland. How about that? So this Macintosh has two ADB ports on it. So we'll plug both of those connectors in here. another serial cable. I keep finding these modem cables with uh, the port I don't need. Let me just look over here. Sure enough, I found one. Hooray. Okay. Because we do need two of them. One for the printer port, one for the modem port, because we're, we're going to test stuff. We might as well test it, huh? So this will plug into the printer port here. Again, Apple would give you a bundle of cables with this thing, or I guess you could buy a bundle of cables with this thing, but uh, mine didn't come with any. But that's okay. I have plenty of cables. Finding them is the difficult part. Sorry, I cannot see the chat right now. I'll look at it in one sec. Just plugging in the SCSI cable here and plugging that into the tech step. Of course, that's the, the shorter cable I have here. And I'm uh, going to need to borrow that monitor adapter, whoops, sorry, uh, for the display of the Macintosh 2. Will there be blood tonight? I hope not. Sorry, let me scroll up here. Looks like I missed some. Guys are 
chant of a storm today. Sorry if I'm if I'm not uh, being uh, a good enough host to read all your questions here. <laughs> I wouldn't pay ten dollars for an emac. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is a Mac OS Nine Lives image for a Mac Mini. So that might be something you want to look into. So look up Mac OS 9 Lives and uh, Mac Mini. I think uh, I think one of the guys from Mac Yak was playing around with that recently. I forget whom, but... All right, so... Uh... Almost, hold on, just gotta get this video cable in. Alright, that should be good enough. Alright, so, let's see if we get this to work. Okay. Alright, so, um, let's adjust this so we can see this a little bit better. So we have to turn on, ah, we have to turn on the Macintosh 2. I wonder if this will turn it on. So let's go to, let's see if I bring this closer, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, um, maybe I'll be able to see the, the screen here a little bit. Um, so number four is for the Macintosh 2. Uh, number one is Power S. I guess that's Power Switch. Let's see if that'll turn it on. Oh, Power Supply off. Well, okay. Uh, back. <laughs> oh, it's actually reading the voltage of the battery, the PRAM battery. That's pretty cool. PRAM battery, 5.68 volts, okay, normal is 3 volts, so maybe I have too many batteries in there. Uh, let's test MD. Oh, it turned on the computer. CPU powered on. Initiating test manager mode via SCSI. Let's see what happens. I don't think it likes that SCSI 2SD adapter, but... Okay, we're getting some weird image on the screen. Uh, I'm going to turn this off. I have a bad feeling about this. I have a very bad feeling about this. That was a very weird image on the screen. I think it was like, I don't, I don't know, hold on. Uh, <laughs> let me plug in this monitor, an actual monitor. Uh, I, have, I, I have kind of a bad feeling about it what was going on with that display. Sorry about that. Oh, oh sorry. My microphone is far away yet. I'm an idiot. Uh, sorry. All right, let's try this again uh, with this monitor here. So let's turn the text step on. And we're going to select Macintosh 4. And let's do, let's do, let's do Logic. What does that do? Oh, no. But yeah, let's do the one that we tried to do before. So that turns it on, which is interesting. Oh, there we go, e-machines. So that's good, we didn't get that on the other screen. Okay, we have our cursor. It says CPU powered on, initiating test via SCSI. I don't know if that's gonna work. <laughs> I wonder if the SCSI ID of this is conflicting with the SCSI 2SD adapter. SCSI or serial problem, try manual TM entry, press back.
please turn off CPU power, okay? Okay, so this is doing logic tests here. So, again, the SCSI 2SD adapter light is solid orange. Maybe it doesn't like that. Since this is doing all the work, I'm going to unplug the SCSI 2SD adapter. Let me shut the machine off first. Sorry that my stomach is in your way, folks. Just doing this quickly. Okay. All right, so let's try that again. Let's turn this back on. Okay, and let's go to Macintosh 2, and let's let's do the, the test again. This test MD, SCSI termination missing, terminate SCSI bus, okay? All right, the machine went black here. Serial or SCSI problem, huh? I don't think I have a, an internal SCSI terminator, to be honest. Um, i trying to think how, how I would terminate that. I don't think I have an internal SCSI terminator, but... Oh, I turned it on by mistake. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do something. Let's do a, a logic test, maybe. Let's check the ROM. Test MD not found. Start test mode. Yeah, I really don't know what I'm doing with this. I'm just playing around. Um, so this one started up, but then it like sort of like boots. Initiating test manager mode via SCSI. Yeah, the SCSI 2SD adapter is terminating the end of the bus because there's only one there's only one bus there. Uh, and this is saying there's a SCSI or a serial problem. Huh. Well, that's strange. Um, let's check the Sims, maybe? No, yeah, that's right. Uh, video? Not, yeah, so it has to, like, run this test MD. Let me turn this off. Uh, I'm trying to think of what... I guess we could try with the LC2. The working LC2. Um, maybe that will give us a different result, I hope. Kind of confused here. Yeah, I mean... I don't know why it would either, but the light turns solid on the SCSI 2SD adapter, which is usually blinking. And so just being completely solid is kind of like... Uh, maybe maybe something's going wrong there. Let's see. Um, so this is an LC3 that I recapped, so that's not going to help me. Um, well, you know what? Let's let's try the. Uh, what, what's the that could happen? Maybe it'll give us some information. Let's try the LC2. Let's do what we, we came here to freaking do, huh? Let me move this computer before I keep tripping over it. Alright, so this is going to be weird because everything's kind of like sitting out of the case here, but. We only need one ADB cable. So that's the printer port. That's the printer port. There's the modem port. SCSI port. And uh, monitor. Alright, 
So this will be interesting. Um, weird like radio noise that's what was happening on this machine that I was hoping a recap would fix but obviously it did not it only does it sometimes all right let's go to ROM B Oop. Go to LC2. Power supply, okay. No, maybe. Oh yeah, five volts normal is 4.8, okay. Yeah, it's a weird noise. It sounds like my computer's a cartoon. Looney Tunes, yes. If everything that's odd makes uh, someone do a super chat, then we're in for a long night here. <laughs> Thank you, Grudy. It's very much appreciated. All right, let's uh, do this test MD. Turn off CPU. If CPU is off, turn on, okay? SCSI termination missing. Terminate the SCSI bus. <sighs> oh, wait. Does this, yeah, wait a second, hold on. I think this needs its SCSI bus terminated because I don't think SCSI works on this machine for the tech step. Let me get, I have a terminator for a 25 pin. Let me get that. So maybe, maybe that's what it was talking about when it was, uh, so uh, here's the SCSI terminator that it needs, the little 25 pin one. Oh wow, this functional wombat. Yeah, I was pretty sure they, they, uh, <laughs> they got rid of most of those. That was like a big announcement. They upgraded those to 56K and everyone was like, wow. All right, let's try this again. So, one ROM B. LC2. Turn on. SCSI termination missing. So yeah, see, it has to enter this test mode via SCSI know what's going on here. I really don't. I might have to read up more on this thing. I've used it very, very briefly before on a Macintosh Classic. <laughs> Take cover! I do think that that is true. This LC is secretly a pinball machine. <laughs> I mean, this machine is kind of borked anyway, so I, I don't think it can actually do anything. That might be my other problem here. <laughs> myself a favor and just swap these around here. I want something good to happen here. Otherwise this is gonna be a this is a boring stream guys. Ugh. Goody 
evening, Trina. Okay, yeah, so let's let's try this one more time with this machine. Uh, let's let's see if we can do any other tests here. Uh, PDS card ID, that's cool. More RAM tests, ADB status, SCSI termination, SCSI functions. Uh, let's check the RAM. Uh, no, that's right, it needs that test. Let me, all right, I have another LC2, I think. It's not recapped, but it should work. So here's that LC2. Let's turn this off. Let's just hear if we see if we hear a startup chime from this one. All right, this one starts up. So let's go. Let's just use this one for now. Drive me a little crazy today. Hopefully, take some of the guesswork out of this. But I want to take the memory out of this because I want to test the memory. That'd be cool, right? Let's put our video memory in there. And our standard memory in. And here I thought my recapping days were slowly going behind me, but no, we have plenty of more work to do here. Oh, look at that. It took that right off the LC. Alright, let's try this again. Sorry that this is kind of wonky here, but we have the other LC here. Let's turn that on. Okay. So we get a screen there. That's good. Let's uh, go to the LC2. Power supply, okay. Uh, let's run this test MD. So let's turn the computer off. SCSI termination missing. All right, attempting to launch. We have a gray screen right now. Oh, I will check the comments in one second. Oh, okay, we got a sad Mac. Communications established. CPU is in test mode. Okay. Sweet. I guess that worked. Um, what, what should we do? Logic? What's logic? Uh, let's test the RAM. Standard test. Okay, it's doing a little squiggly dance in the corner. I think we got it working. Let's, uh, let's move this tripod down so I don't hold it in a weird way. Better bring it as close as we can. Sorry, let me check up in the chat here. Uh, LC must have an internal drive connecting even if it's not powered on. Otherwise, there will be a termination issue. Ah, that is very good to know. Thank you. Okay, so... It's doing some type of memory test, I assume? I don't know how long it's supposed to take. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the monitor's literally behind my head. Okay, so test passed. RAM size 10 megabytes. That is freaking handy right there. Telling me the size of the memory without having to boot the machine. If only this would want to work on the Macintosh 2 or the 2SI, we'd be in business. <laughs> What else could this do? Um, let's do the ROM check. Passed, okay. RAM size, okay, so this is not even doing a check, it's just checking the RAM size, that's cool. Yeah, onboard memory, 4 megabytes, total 10 megabytes. That is pretty cool right there. So actually, I have these memory sticks labeled wrong, I guess. It says onboard, megabyte, uh, onboard memory is 4, 
but total is 10. So, interesting. Wait, how does that make sense? Because I have two RAM sticks in here. Eh, whatever, we'll figure that out. I thought they were four megs each, but uh, what's address? Four? Address bus test, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why it does that. I'll have to read up on the manual, honestly. All right, so the address test passed. Um, what's data? Data bus test. I guess that's over SCSI, okay. Yeah, so this, this is pretty interesting. We've got these whole mess of wires plugged into this LC here. And uh, it's booted to this blank screen. And the next step is running all these, uh, these tests here. Data bus test passed. Um, what else can we do with this thing? Video. Monitor ID. Video test patterns. Let's go to monitor ID. Macintosh high res. I guess 640 by 480 is high res. Uh, black and white pattern. Let's see. Does that do it? Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And uh, gray pattern. 4 bit. Color pattern. You should see five, so the screen is telling me you should see five green, five blue, five red bars, or 16 grays. That is pretty darn cool. I'm liking this thing more and more. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? PDS card ID, I don't have anything plugged in there. Uh, CPU ID, verify CPU ID. CPU is Macintosh LC2. Press zero for info. Oh, that's cool. I get a ROM version there. ROM is 67C, subversion 19F2. That's pretty neat. So, wow. Um, there's no. Okay, so it's detecting the floppy drive. One drive, 1.4 megabytes. This is pretty cool, guys. Uh, this is the LC2 we have for data. This is the LC2 that works, so it's, it's not really helping us with the other one at the moment. But that is really neat. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this Macintosh. We're going to leave this on, and I want to see if we could read the report of all that data that we we're testing. So let's let's do that here. So we get this monitor out of the way actually. We're not going to be using you right now. Okay. And we're going to be plugging this monitor back into our friend the Performa here and we're going to plug this serial cable back into the Performa because we want to see if we could download a report from this tech step here. So, uh, Alright, so we have our Macintosh here. You guys follow up on the chat. Sorry guys. Ah, okay Bruce, that would make a lot of sense. Yes, the rhombus cap can recognize only 10 megabytes. Okay, that would make a lot of sense. Let's see. Does anyone know if it's possible to downgrade the revision A IMAX firmware? Um, yeah, Dysfunctional Wombat, there's a whole thread on, I think it's the 68K MLA form about downgrading it. There's some software somebody was working on to help you do that. Um, so take a look there if you haven't done that already. Because, uh, yeah, that's the way you can get a floppy drive using that internal header on there. All right, anyway, let's uh, go to this report generator now. Because that we didn't turn off the text steps, so we should be able to get a report from it. 
So let's go to port, uh, modem port, and receive log. Press star and send. Okay. Okay, and it says send log to Mac from ROM A. I'll say current log, sending log, receiving log. There we go. Look at this. That's cool. So all the reports we just ran, uh, it gives us everything here. So power supply, 5 volts, RAM test standard, um, RAM size, 10 megabytes, monitor, high, Macintosh high res. Uh, wow, that's pretty cool. If, it, if there were errors, it would give us errors. Uh, the tech step thinks it's 1956. Uh, actually, this Macintosh thinks it's 1956. Um, so we have to change the, the clock battery in here. Um, that's pretty neat. Yeah, uh, logic board runs, no errors. Um, yeah, let's save this. It's pretty cool. Yeah, Mac Tracker did have sad times. Uh, not in the iOS version, I don't think, though. Sorry, just reading up the chat here. Yeah, there used to be a little sound button on there. I think they, they changed it in recent versions. Okay, so we have our log here, which is pretty cool. Um, we can save it, we can print it, we can customize report by changing the service provider name and stuff like this on the first line. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes, it actually, it, well, so it works. Uh, I was testing an L, another LC2 that does work, but we were able to uh, plug the tech step into that LC, run some tests, and then leaving the tech step on, plugging into this machine, and it actually f generated this report here. Um, let me uh, just go upstairs to grab a drink of water real quick. I'll be right back in like two minutes. Um, my throat is just getting a little parched here. And we should print this out on an image writer. What do you guys think? You want to print out this report? Let me know in the comments. I'll be right back in a second.
just scroll up here. I'm back, I'm back. I just walked upstairs to get a glass of water. Here's the water glass. Moving it away from the tech step here. Alright, let's just get back to me looking at the comments here because there's a lot of comments. Alright. Print away. Okay. Did a bunch of diagnostics and we're going to it. Yep. <laughs> Print it and make it a giveaway. Okay. Yeah, the Sid Mac is, uh, can be pretty stark. Storm of nightmares about Sid Mac. A super chat will make him reappear gritty. <laughs> no, I'm not here. I don't, I don't know. Where, where, where am I? Uh, I should have a fridge and water near your workstation. That's probably an extremely bad idea. Oh. Uh, sorry. I need like... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I hid the mic. It was by the Macintosh 2 on the other table. I, I, I need a lot of things. Let's just say that. And a wireless lapel mic is probably... I do have a, a lapel mic. It just, it's not... You know, it's a wired one. I'd be... For me, going from here to there, I'd be like all tangled up in it already. <sighs> okay, so um, let's print out this report. So let me uh, see how long this... Ser this uh... Actually, wait. <laughs> I have an idea. Hold on. <laughs> oh, you're going to... They're going to like this. This is a bit nutty. Um, <laughs> hold, please. Okay, so the printer is all the way over there. We got a bunch of cables. <laughs> I always have a nutty idea. Okay, so um, the printer is quite far away. How could we access that printer, you may say? I'm rhyming. That's sort of scary. Um, we're going to use some cables. And if I could find the other one, I think it's right over here. Let's see. I just saw the stupid thing staring at me in the face when I was looking for the other cable. Eh. Well, anyway. Let's see. Is it over here? Hold on. This is going to drive me nuts if I don't find it. I just literally saw it. Um... That's not gonna do it. Alright, well I'm trying to find the other end of this networking cable. Hold please. Uh where the heck would it go? Oh boy. This is my life, gentlemen. Okay, I got it. Okay, so this, <laughs> yes, Dana's got it right. <laughs> we're gonna make a local talk network and we're gonna talk about this in an upcoming video, but I happen to have all the cables here, so we might as well demonstrate. Give you guys a little sneak peek of what I'm gonna be talking about. Okay, so how can I access that printer? So that printer is all the way by that G4 over here. So that's all the way on that desk. That's pretty far away. So, 
I'm not going to lift up that printer because it has a stack of paper behind it. Um, and it's all fed up and everything, you know, feeding with the paper and everything. So, um, what I want to do is create a network. So, Local Talk is Apple's proprietary network. And I just realized this is not an Apple branded Local Talk connector. But interesting enough, anyway. So, um, Local Talk was Apple's solution um, to network computers and, you know, uh, split serial connectors and such. So, you had. Um, Sorry, they're all tangled up here, so I'm just trying to give you an example. So you had an adapter box like this. Uh, let me grab the other one over here, too, just to show you. Ah. Did I grab that one already? Oh, yeah, here it is. So they have these adapter boxes here. And this adapter box takes one serial port here, just your DB... Uh, or, or mini DIN 8 connector or whatever, takes that serial port, just like you would have on the back of your Macintosh, and it splits it into two connections. And these two connections are um, Apple's local tall cables. So these cables have only three pins and a little plastic bumper there, and it's hard for the camera to focus on it because it's a pile of junk. But you could sort of see it there. And so what you do is you take one of these cables, and you plug it in correctly, um, and it sort of snaps in. This little piece of plastic has like this little spring to it, and it snaps in there. So the idea is that you could create an Apple Talk network, I'm sorry, a local talk network. Local talk is the cable, Apple Talk is the protocol. And you could essentially create a little network by sharing um, you know, your Mac or your printer using these cables. So yeah, that's what that's for. So a lot of you have probably seen these uh, if you had a laser writer or something like that. Um, they actually made these way back for the original Macintosh. Here's an adapter for the original Macintosh. You can see the 99 cent price tag on this thing from I got from a thrift store. And you can see it has the older style serial port here. They would have in a Macintosh 128K or a Macintosh 512K. Isn't that neat? So. This is the very, you know, the older type of that, and here's the newer type of that. Now, um, what's interesting is Apple had this solution, which is essentially some logic chips in here and some extra cables in here. Now, these cables were a little expensive, and they weren't actually rated to um, be installed behind walls, at least in the United States. So other companies figured out, Farallon being the... the uh, main inventor of this was that you can take the same serial port but instead of Apple's proprietary ports here you would just use a single RJ11 phone jack for each port so you could just take your standard telephone cable like this one here and you could just plug that in here and there you go you have a very cheap cable as opposed to Apple's expensive one so this phone net stuff took off like crazy, and a lot of people ended up using it. The only challenge here is with phone net, you have to terminate the port you're not using. Apple's adapter was a bit more sophisticated and had termination built in. But here, you had to terminate one. So what you do is you have this little resistor here. If you look closely, that's all that is. That's a, just a one resistor that's uh, shorting two pins out of that phone jack. Um, and, it, you know, they usually had these on keychains or whatever, but if you took this out, you could see there are two ports here. Now, you didn't need that resistor if you were using two cables, if you were spreading this out to multiple computers. But if this was like a dead end or their final computer there, you needed that little thing there. So what I think I could do, uh, and I'm going to use Apple's solution here because I just happen to have the cables with me. Um, I'm going to just create a very simple network by just extending this cable. And I should be able to print to the printer, hopefully. Um, there was an Apple Talk, Local Talk add-on option for that printer, but I think that just allowed me to share it to multiple machines. I'm hopefully just doing a direct connection here, but maybe I'm going to not do it correctly. Who knows? But um, I should just be able to essentially, maybe, no, you know what? Actually, I'm probably going to do this wrong. Uh, I'm going to test that anyway, because the worst case, nothing prints, and I'll just drag the printer over here. Um, yeah. Let's see, just following up here. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, that's what this is for. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna try plugging this in. Worst that worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work. So let me just plug this into the back of the performer. Okay, and we have a pretty long cable here. Now, of course, this cable is not long enough. So what I actually do have is a little bridge connector here. So this will take two of these Apple cables and just extend them if I plug them in correctly. Huh, why doesn't it want to go in? Okay, that kind of fits. Um, then we have another one of those cables. You probably get them longer too. This is just the the type I have. Yes, it's local talk is nice, but yes, it is very slow. Not gonna win a speed contest here. Alright, so I have this. I'm gonna plug that into this adapter here. And I've been meaning to do this because I, I have to do that video. I've been meaning to do this just to test my hypothesis on that video. So let's plug this into the printer here. Now I actually have a serial cable extension cable here. So if this doesn't work, uh, here's the cable from the printer and that's, it's a female end. So I should be able to actually make it, but I'm just curious if this will work. It, it might not. All right, so the printer's making tons of noise on the other side of the room there. You might even be able to hear it from here. <laughs> Local talk. <laughs> 30 kilobits per second. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's go to chooser here. And uh, where's the camera? Here we are. And we're going to choose the image writer. And we're going to select the printer for it. Let's make sure we plug it into the right port here. Uh, yes, we did. Okay, make sure that it's firmly in place there. Because technically we're not using the Apple Talk protocol, so this might not work, but I'm just curious. You know, I don't pretend to know everything. I'm just curious here. So, that should be selected, yep. All right, so let's try and print something here. Uh, image writer, print. Oh. I heard a noise. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> Something's not right. <laughs> oh boy. I think the data is getting corrupt <laughs> on the way over to that printer. I'm going to have to cancel this. Oh boy. Well, something printed. Something printed, but it's uh, <laughs> not exactly what we were expecting. Oh boy. Let's, uh, let's explain what happened here. So, yeah, this is what we got. make out some text here it says service provider name and address blah 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 um apple text step and then it just sort of went a little nutty here i don't think that's it i think i think these local talk adapters are, are transmitting the packets a little bit in a different way to prove this hypothesis i have that local talk cable so i'm just going to grab this local talk cable here And make 
make sure that's plugged into the printer port. Since I do have that extender cable, I should be able to just reach there. Let's see. Of course, my chair is like right in the middle of where this needs to go. <laughs> I think it, I think it'll just make it, folks. Okay, we we just we just made it here. Uh, let me move some of these towers here. Some of these bins that are always in my way. Okay. Ah. Yeah, I need to clean up this place. There's there's towers everywhere. Not that that's a bad thing, it's just... It makes for moving around very difficult. Okay, so... Uh, also, I want you to see the printer. That would be nice too, huh? <laughs> spy blocker, yes, or otherwise known as a container lid to help keep the light out when you're digitizing 8mm projector films. Okay, let's let's bring it down, ow, and let's look at that printer there. Ow, I almost bled there, almost. Got my hand caught in the wedge of the tripod here. So, let's bring you closer, as close as this USB extension cord will allow. Let's turn our printer back on. Let's bring our microphone a little closer. Cover your ears, gentlemen. And we're going to try to print again. Let's see. It's actually printing correctly this time. This is awesome. <laughs> I bet you nobody has printed out one of these tech step reports on an image writer 2 in a long, long time. Probably I'm the first of 2020 to do it. This will be a good way if I recap people's Macs to prove it works. <laughs> as long as it's one of those limited models. Print out a report. <laughs> Is that it? Whoa, what are you doing? Is there a second page? Maybe? No, I think that's it. All right, so let's stop looking at my butt here. And we'll look at this printer report one second. Let me adjust the tripod again. Very professional, I know. Constantly updating. Updating. Adjusting the tripod. I can't even speak. Okay, let's take a sit a seat here and take a look at the reports that printed out. So let's look at the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you please reiterate what the difference was? Okay, so um yes, so Dana got it correct. So uh, let me hold up the adapter here. Oh, it's still plugged in. Um this guy. So I was using this local talk adapter with the assumption that if I'm not really using the Apple Talk protocol, it should still deliver a serial connection. The problem being, this has many more pins than the local talk network does. So to actually share stuff over that local talk network, it must be doing some compression and some magic uh, to actually make that happen. So um, since this only has three pins there. So again, um, that's probably not a smart thing to do. I just made an assumption there, it didn't work. 
but we proved that just by connecting a very long <laughs> uh, printer cable, just a standard Apple printer cable, that it worked fine. So this was the result we got previously. There's some text in there. This is the result that we got when we connected it correctly. So here's our nice report, exactly what was displayed on our CRT monitor. Printed out on some beautiful uh, paper here that is not only white on the front, but it has a layer of yellow <laughs> and a layer of pink. This is like carbon copy copy paper here. So uh, that's that's a way to do it. <laughs> this is pretty cool. This is, this is pretty cool. So, and I love using this printer. I mean, this thing has uh, enough ribbon in it probably to last for a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, that's a 2SI and a Quadra. Uh, what is that? I think it's a 605. Let's, let's double check because they, they all look the same after a while. Yes, it is a 605. Good eye. Ah. Yes, triplicate paper. Awesome. So uh, that kind of covers everything I wanted to do tonight. And yeah, I mean, looking <laughs> looking at uh, the stream here, we've been going for about almost three hours here. So yeah, yeah it's been a long time. Let me get some water here. I've been talking my butt off. <laughs> Does anybody want this report? <laughs> Anybody within the United States? I'm not going to ship this internationally, unfortunately. That, that would be a waste of taxpayer money. <laughs> my money. <laughs> All right, Jay, you want the report? I'll send it to you. <laughs> That's interesting that it, uh, this one and the dash was supposed to be over here and it moved it over there. Carrier pigeon, yes. <laughs> We'll put this along in the in Jay's pile. Jay has a pile of my Mac crap he has to send me. I'm gonna have a pile of printed documents from a dot matrix printer to send him. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's how I printed that banner up there, that uh, 1,000 subscriber banner, through that lovely printer. That's why it has a shade of pink. You get dibs on the pink copy. <laughs> if you really want it, it's only like what 50 cents to send a letter. Within the United States, I'd be happy to send triplicate copies or whatever to you guys. <laughs> but I, I, I'd assume you probably want certificates or some funnier things. Uh, carrier signal pigeon. Oh, boy. Oh, well, I've been talking straight for two and a half hours. Holy crap. Um, yeah, so we played around the tech step. I'm surprised that... Um, I'm surprised we got it to, to work because I, I really have not played with that probably since I got it, which is a long time ago. I, you know what? I, I, I'm not going to give away the idea that I had, but, um, I'm doing something with that printer <laughs> and I do have a classic print shop. <laughs> Grudy fell asleep in his party chair. <laughs> oh, that's great. Send prints out when people send you MacWorks documents. Yeah, if somebody sends me an AppleWorks document, I can print it out for them. <laughs> that'll be that'll be that'll be the business I open. I don't think I'd last long at all, at all. Huh. I can print out greeting cards though. That's kind of fun. But yeah, um, I don't know what else to cover here. I mean, we we've been playing around for a while now. Um, I want to do some more research on the tech step now that I got. Um, some of the software for it so yeah yeah no no problem scarlet swordfish um i'm glad you learned some stuff <laughs> longest printout ever that the box of paper behind that printer is a thousand sheets so yeah that poor image writer um that's the reason why i have like three or four of those machines because yeah <laughs> uh farty chair yeah that's that's uh that's uh grudy's chair and uh, when he sits in Mac Yak, he's sitting in this big chair and it sometimes makes farty noises when he moves around. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, this is, this is a pretty cool stream. I learned something, too. I mean, I have to do some research for that, that local talk video when I learned that you can't just use the adapter and just expect it to work. So, uh, yeah, I have, I have plenty of sheets of this, a thousand sheets of tractor feed paper. And uh, Mike from uh, Mac Yak actually gave me a stack about uh, yay big or so just the plain white paper uh, so it's not triplicate but it's just your standard paper it's actually a little thicker which is nice because um, I don't mind printing on this but um, 
if you split this apart, these pages are very, very thin. So usually if I print out a certificate or a banner for somebody, I just give them everything. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I got to talk about here. Anybody have any questions about what we were playing around with? Um, I don't know if I'll do a stream tomorrow. Um, I might. We'll see. Um, I have more Max to recap, of course. Um, I, I kind of don't want it. Like, I, I'm very tempted to try and mess with the LC and try to get it to work, but I... Yeah, I, it's, it's, I'm torn between, you know, trying to fix another Mac and move forward or tinkering around with that one, because I could just do that for hours. Might even just do it offline. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, that, that image writer is a good one, though. That's, uh... Uh, we we I don't have the original image writer we had when we were when we were growing up. We gave that away, and because um, we we didn't need any more. So when I saw one years later, I picked it up and I've just had them since then. <laughs> Cap them, Max. All right, well I will try, Brock. <laughs> I'll try try not to screw them up. Um, it looks like Amazon canceled that order I had of the um, of the um, flux that Bruce recommended. I don't know why. I have to look at that email. Uh, so I'll just try and order it again. Maybe they're out of stock or something. But, um, yeah. So, again, any questions or anything you guys have uh, before we wrap this up? Um, it's getting pretty late here, so I should not be staying up as late as I've been. <laughs> but, yeah, so we played around with that LC2 today. Uh, played around with the tech step. Uh, I'd like to play around with that more. I need a, a working SE or a, or a classic. Um, I do have a classic. I did take the PRAM battery out of there. Um, I kind of want to order the caps for those for the uh, analog board and stuff because while I have the machine open, might as well do that. So um, probably go on Bruce's website after the stream, uh, look up those caps and see see to do that. Um, my voice is getting pretty hoarse here, even with drinking water. So I don't know if I'll be on the Discord voice chat. <laughs> um, we'll see. Let me let me let me just relax for a minute and then maybe I'll go on in like 15 minutes or something like that. So. Huh, all right, I'm not seeing any questions, so I'm going to call it a night. I appreciate everybody hanging out here, and um, I'll probably do another live stream soon. Uh, if you want, follow me on Twitter, because those notifications sometimes work a little better than YouTube. Uh, my username or my handle or whatever you want to call it is Mac84TV. That's M-A-C-84TV. And, uh, yeah, thanks for your support. Thanks for all the super chats. Thanks for my Patreon supporters for all the, the support you guys give me. And uh, I guess that's going to wrap it up for tonight. So I appreciate you sticking through what our weird unplanned stream was as we went a little crazy trying to get some things to work. But that's what happens when you're messing with the old computer. So hopefully you had fun. So see you later, guys, as I awkwardly try and push the end stream button without knocking over this glass of water. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Oh, I knocked over something, but it wasn't the water. Maybe it was. And now the cursor is not moving to the place I want it to. I need a mouse pad on this desk, and I'm just stalling for time here because, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this is not working out here. Um, there we go. All right, bye. <laughs> it won't let me end.